Hello there, friends. Welcome again to Grace Baptist Church. We're coming to you live tonight from our office here at Grace Baptist. Seven o'clock, right on the dot. And I hope you're having a great day today. We are all the way down to the 22nd of September. My, my, it's getting closer. Winter will be here before you know it, I think. Fall starts here in another week or so. Cold weather will be on its way, won't it? We had a bad thunderstorm about a, oh, about an hour or two ago here at the church. Lightning popping every which way. But anyway, I hope you have your Bible and turn with us over into Proverbs chapter number 17. We're going to begin where we left off last week. We've been talking about a merry heart doeth good like a medicine in verse 22. That's Proverbs 17, verse 22. Kind of reminds me of the story I heard about a cat. And uh, this cat died and went to heaven. And Peter said, you know, you've really had a rough time on the earth. And you've been chased by women with brooms. You've been chased by dogs. And you've just really had a rough time. I want you to have a good time and enjoy your stay in heaven. And so he said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you whatever you want. You get a wish. And whatever your wish is, that's what we'll do. And the cat said, you know, you are right. I did have to run and run and run and run. And I did have to be dodging old ladies with brooms and dodging cars and dodging dogs. And I'd just like to rest a while. Could you fix me a little maybe a little kitten home or a little kitten bed where I could just lay in that bed and rest for a little bit and get my strength back. Peter said, consider it done. Boom. That little cat had its own bed. Oh, he was so happy. Had his own bed. Well, then we see that there was about a dozen mice, and they were in a tragic accident out on a farm and all of them were killed and they went to heaven and Peter said well y'all really did have a rough time on earth and you were running from cats and dogs and old ladies with brooms and everything you can think of you probably even had it worse than the cat did and I'm just going to answer your request whatever you want this is heaven we'll get it for you <laughs> well one of the little Mice spoke up and said, I think I'd like to have some roller skates. And the rest of them said, you know, I would too. I've never roller skated, but we've been running, running, running. It'd be nice to be able to just roller skate around heaven. And Peter said, consider it done. And boom, all 12 of those mice had roller skates. Well, it's about two weeks later, Simon Peter's making his rounds, and he saw the cat laying over there in his bed, and boy, he was asleep and stretched out, just relaxed as he could be, and didn't want to wake him up, but he wanted to check on him. And he asked him, said, uh, Cat, are you doing okay? And the cat said, I sure am, Peter, and I want to thank you for this bed. I have really got a lot of rest since I've been in heaven. It's the most comfortable bed I've ever laid on. And Peter said, well, I am so glad you like it. And then Peter said, anything else? And he said, well, I do want you to know, and the cat said, I do want you to know that those meals on wheels that you sent by, they were really good too. <laughs> Talking about those mice. Well, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It's good to laugh. A broken spirit drieth up to bones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time we can come together and bless each person as we study this passage. Teach us things that will enable us to be more like our Savior Jesus. For it's in his precious holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, we are looking at this passage and it, it tells us here in verse 23, A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Now, that's basically where we left off last week. The wicked man is the man that can be bribed. You ever known anybody that could be bribed and 
Uh, you could buy them off. It happens in government all the time. It happens even in courtrooms. Uh, they work out a deal. And if you give them enough money, they'll let you go. And it shouldn't be that way. The Bible said right's right and wrong's wrong. God is a just God. And uh, they won't be able to do that with our Lord. You can't buy him off. He owns a cattle of a thousand hills and owns a gold in them their hills as well. But anyway, it's kind of sad to see it happen. As I mentioned last week, these young men get in, and young ladies, they get in Congress, they go to Washington. I'm sure they have great aspirations when they start out. But they go up there and they just, before long, you know, they're just average ordinary citizens, but before long, they're changing their stance on things. They're not quite what they campaigned on. And you think, well, where's, where's that stand you're supposed to have taken? Well, I was going to, but I just wasn't able to do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what's happened. Somebody's got to them. Somebody's paid them off. That's what the Bible says here. A wicked man takes the gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. So God considers that wickedness. Don't let anybody buy you out, friends. You stay true. You stay honest with the Lord, and God will bless you for that. Then we're moving on to verse number 24 here. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Now, what's he saying here in this passage? Well, he's basically telling us that wisdom is better than even getting a doctor's degree. I mean, understanding, and I like to have understanding. I like all the education I can get. I enjoyed being able to go to Bible college and go to seminary and study and learn and grow, but you know what's even more important than that is the wisdom of God. James 1, 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God will give you wisdom. And so we see here that the Lord is promising wisdom to those who would come to him. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding. Wisdom is accessible to a discerning man, but a fool keeps looking to other interests and never really finds wisdom. A foolish person cannot find any wisdom anywhere. And it's so sad, isn't it? Then verse number 25, a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Now, we've talked about this many times. Uh, it's so sad to see uh, someone who has been raised by godly parents turn on them and go the ways of the world and curse their mom and dad and have disrespect towards them. If you want a long life, the Bible said, obey your mom and dad. You know, take care of them. Look after them. They look after they looked after you, didn't they? And uh, so, what we want to do is make sure that we're not causing grief to mom and dad, but that we're causing joy in their hearts, because it's the joy of the Lord that's our strength, and the joy of the Lord's your strength. And God will give you that joy. So, don't become that foolish son or that foolish daughter that becomes a grief to mom and dad, that bitterness that creeps in. No, you're going to be the one who lives for Jesus. You're going to be the one that stays faithful to God. You're going to be the one that makes mom and dad proud of you. And they want to be proud of you, and I'm sure they are. Then we're moving on here. Let's go to the next one. Here's what it says in verse 26. Also, to punish the just is not good nor to strike princes for equity. Now, what's he talking about in that verse? To punish literally means to find the just or the righteous person. And that's what happens when people start taking bribes. and People start getting all kinds of outside influence in their lives. And they'll take a just person, an honest person, and find them. Try to make them look bad. Try to... Blame them for the whole problem. 
Have you ever been blamed for something you had nothing to do with? And yet, for some reason, <laughs> you was caught right in the middle of it. And that's why he says it's not good. You don't punish the just, you punish the wicked. And that's what God does. Nor to strike princes for equity. So he's saying here, friends, when we look at this verse and put it in comparison and think about life, to punish means to find the just person is the righteous person. The princes would be the noble ones, and the equity is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. See, you don't strike princes for unrighteousness because normally they're accountable to everyone unless they're disobeying God. So we go on to the next passage in our scripture reading here. It says here in verse 27, He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Oh no. <laughs> and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. What's he saying there? He restrains his words. He is cool and composed. He doesn't lose his temper and spout out words that he regrets later on. Have you ever done that? Sometimes we all do, don't we? We say things we didn't really mean to say and hurt people we would never really want to hurt. But what happens in the heat of that argument? Well, red buttons are getting pushed on both sides. And we're trying to outdo each other. Do you remember this time when we pushed the red button? And then they said, oh, that's nothing. Do you remember this time? And then they pushed the red button. And boy, we're back and forth and back and forth. And pretty soon we say things and we have to apologize. And it's always good. The Bible says, don't ever go to bed mad. You know, stay up and work it out. Now, we've always tried to do that, me and my wife, Wanda. I thank God for her. She's a godly woman, and she's a great helpmeet to me in the ministry, and I love her dearly. Now, there was one time we didn't sleep for three months, but we did follow that verse. <laughs> I'm just kidding on that. But anyway, notice what it says there. You have knowledge... You spare your word. Sometimes, you remember the old commercial when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. And it's kind of like the quiet one. You don't know how smart they are. And as long as they stay subdued, then you probably are thinking they're pretty smart people. Unless they open up and, and let you know by what they say, they're really not that smart. But if they keep their words to themselves and spare their words then it seems as if that person must be a pretty wise person and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit and when you look at that word man of understanding is of an excellent spirit that carries the idea of a cool composed type of a person who has the understanding of the lord who has the wisdom of god in their life not just a degree, as I said. And there's nothing wrong with getting a degree, but I'd rather have the wisdom of God any day than formal education. I, I think we ought to have formal education, train, especially if you're going in the ministry or if you're going to be teaching and preaching the Word of God. You need to know a little bit about the Bible and what you're going to be facing as a pastor or a missionary or evangelist, a, a Christian school teacher or a regular school teacher. There's a lot to learn in life. But what goes even further than that is God's wisdom. God's wisdom comes from the Word, but it also comes from experience. If you want some wisdom, talk to some of the wonderful people in the nursing home and see what they say. And they will bless your heart. They will tell you some good things about life. They'll sit down and they'll say, you don't think you're going to make it at times in life, but I'm a, a witness and I'm a testimony that God is faithful and God is going to bring you through every situation that you face and glory to God, he looks after his children and takes good care of us. And you went up there to be a blessing to them. You visited them in the nursing home and boy, they, you left there all fired up and they was a blessing to you. <laughs> and that's the way it works. 
there's something about experience in the aging process that nothing else can can take its place. I mean, you you like I say, you can get all the education, you can have all the degrees, but you talk to somebody that's been down the road a few times. Talk to somebody that's got some experience. They can also help you very, very much. So that's why he says, if you will just spare your words, nobody will know how wise you are, or they will not even know if you're not really sure what you're talking about. <laughs> Depends on the subject, doesn't it? Let's look at verse number 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, he is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips, he is esteemed a man of understanding. Now, I didn't say that, but God said that. And what's he saying here, friends? Well, what's he saying is this. A foolish person, as long as they don't talk, <laughs> nobody knows they're foolish. That's why the Bible says, be very careful what we say. We used to sing a song in the children's church. He used to work with children years ago and uh, loved to work with children. See their little faces and those eyes bright and boy, they're just beaming. And we used to sing a song. Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little tongue what you say. <laughs> Be careful little feet where you go, you know. Why? Because we can fall into Satan's traps. And he's going to try to trap us at times. And thank God the Lord will show us the right way. He always does. So even a foolish person, if they'll just be quiet, nobody knows how foolish they are. They're counted wise. Everybody says, that must be one of the smartest person people I've ever been around because, you know, they didn't hardly say anything, but when they did, it really made sense. And even a person that shutteth his lips, he is esteemed a man of understanding. People look at him and say, well, I wonder how he got so smart. And they don't realize he's just trying to be quiet. He's trying to listen. And if we just learn to listen a little more, we can learn a lot more. You never listen while we're talking. But we can learn while we're listening. And then we'll go to verse number 1 in chapter 18. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. In other words, he's talking here about the one that separates himself. He seeks his own desires, and he breaks out in quarrels against all sound wisdom. This is that person that won't listen to advice. This is that person that doesn't want to get involved. This is that person that just seems like that they're totally uh, against what the Bible has been talking about, being quiet and listening instead of always having to quarrel. Uh, this is the person that's going to get into it. They have separated themselves to their own wisdom, their own way of thinking. You're not going to change their mind. It's going to take an act of God to do it. And what's going to happen is, if you keep trying to change their mind, they're going to be intermeddling with your wisdom and trying to fuss and fight and feud and everything else. Let God take care of that person. And you just enjoy your life. Verse number two, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. What's he saying here? Well, it's another way of saying what we've just been talking about. A foolish person does not want godly counsel. If you give a foolish person godly counsel, most of the time they're going to turn from it, and they're going to try their best to get away from it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it, and they don't want to touch it. Why? Because God is on the throne. And they know that if they have to listen to God, they're going to be accountable. And so the foolish person says, I don't think I'm going to listen to that. As a matter of fact, they even try to cast doubt on the Bible. They try to cast doubt on the preacher and Christianity. You know, I know some tremendous Christian scientists who have just as much proof and explanation 
that the world was created in six days and God rested on the Sabbath day, they've got, to me, more evidence of that than those who claim to be the smartest of all, the evolutionary scientist who claims that everything just kind of haphazardly happened and it exploded, a big ball exploded, and 30 minutes later the known universe existed. And now we see that there is intelligent design everywhere you look. Look in the sky, you'll see the moon. Look up there and you'll see the sun. Look at your body, you'll have a heart that beats. What keeps that heart beating? Look at your health. Look at the eyes, just the delicate form of the human body tells you it didn't just happen by chance. It didn't just happen by time. There had to be an intelligent designer. I mean, when you think about it, you look at a watch, and that had to have a watchmaker to put it together. You don't just throw a bunch of parts out on the table and wait about a million years and they all come together and they're a watch. No. That watch comes together when there is a watchmaker who knows how to put the pieces together. And God knows how to put the pieces together. And he'll do it for you and he's done it for me. And he'll put the pieces together in your life and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Thank God for his blessings on us. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. Come and see us. We do have a service at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning here at the church, and we'd love to meet you, get to know you. Let us pray. Father, again, thank you for these wonderful words of wisdom. The Proverbs, oh, they teach us so many ways of life that are valuable to us, help us to learn and grow. Bless those that have tuned in, and I pray it'll be a blessing to each person. In Jesus' name, amen.